So Joe, um, where are we going today? We're going to Collier Seminole State Park, way down past Naples. This is going to be our longest trip. Yeah. Miles-wise. Miles-wise, yeah. Uh, it should take us most of the day to get there. We're going down to the Everglades. Yeah, we just had a rock hit the window, and now we have a crack in our windshield. Isn't that fun? It looks like this is the um, Sarasota Circus. 7,271-acre Collier Seminole State Park lies partly within the Great Mangrove Swamp of Southern Florida, one of the largest mangrove swamps in the world. Well, we got to Collier Seminole State Park and Joe's unhooking the car. The Blue Ox flat tow system really is easy to deal with. It's no harder than putting on a trailer. This is really our tightest camping site we've ever had. It's so tight we can't even put out the awning. Yeah. And the water's leaking. After driving 360 miles, we decided to eat indoors, so we're having leftovers. I'm using the oven to heat up our eggplant parmesan. There's the blockhouse, built as the first ranger place. In the early 1920s, advertising tycoon Baron Collier purchased nearly a million acres in southwest Florida. In 1923, it became Collier County. Money talks. These are replicas of Seminole Indian buildings. It's a canoe over there. Little thing here. This walking dredge, built in Michigan, was designed to be used over swampy ground. It dug a canal on one side of the road and used the dug-up material for road fill to elevate the road. It went 10 feet at a time. This machine is now a National Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark, one of only 264 in the world. Hey Joe, we're walking on this trail. Anything to say? Oh. I would hate to have to cut across country. It's awful thick. It's really nice here. I love these boardwalks. Baron Collier tried to get this area designated as a national park, but that didn't work out. Later, he donated the land to Collier County for a park to preserve the royal palms and as a memorial to those that fought in the Seminole Wars. In 1947, the county donated the land to the state of Florida and it became Collier Seminole State Park. It features vegetation and wildlife typical of Florida's Everglades. Although rare elsewhere, the park covers one of the three original stands of royal palms in Florida, coexisting with large areas of mangrove swamp. We were on this hike in the Collier Seminole State Park and we just stopped to take a little break on this nice boardwalk and have some water. It's really pretty here, beautiful day. Nice to be here with Joe. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's a great boardwalk. Yeah. I mean, the only negative to this park is there's some big roads right next to it, so constant road noise, but that's not too bad. Not too bad. Looking forward to a kayak trip tomorrow, hopefully. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're doing bike riding today. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go and maybe. yeah, kayak, maybe go to the beach later. What's that behind you? Well, we think that's an alligator trail. Someone was just stopped and talked to us about it. And um, definitely some kind of animal. <laughs> been Something's been there. slithering through there. Hey buddy. <laughs> okay, let's 
This is my first time using our Ninja Juicer and I'm excited to see how this turns out. I'm making us a little smoothie with pineapples, bananas, and half of an apple. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, Joe's Moonshine to it for our afternoon cocktail. Okay, I have it all set up. I um, screwed the top on, put it onto the Ninja, and let's see what happens. Well, we came out early. We we're going to fly the drone, but uh, he just got a notification that we're too close to an airport, so I guess we can't do that. Well, we think we found a place where we can fly the drone. This area was one of the last refuges of the Seminole Indians as they were hunted down during the three Seminole Indian Wars against the U.S. Army. By far the largest killer of soldiers was disease. They could not survive in the deep Everglades. The remaining Seminole considered themselves the unconquered tribe. very first trip. She goes out and she grabs a hold of the mangrove first thing and boats were pulling up next to her and all of a sudden she looks up at her at her hand and there's a crab crawling, crawling down her arm. And <laughs> God love her, she just told me that she was a pro right away. She didn't say a word about it and just said, hey everybody, you want to see a crab on my on my arm over here? Manatees, you could see dolphins, maybe you could see sharks, you could see a lot of different things, um, possibly otters. It, it all depends on every animal's personal tolerance for salt water. So the way we've been traveling today is the same way that those ancient people would have traveled. However, they wouldn't have had these plastic. nice uh, plastic molded canoes and comfy seats and handy dandy paddles. They would have had to work hard for their canoes. Uh, they would have had to first locate a good sized um, cypress or pine tree or some other sort of mostly hardwood type tree. And then they'd have to chop it down and get a good fire going so that they could the, the core of it good and hot and make it easier to carve all of that out and then you've got a dugout to do. The campground has 105 sites and was basically full while we were there. The sites are mostly in the open. Ours was shaded but very narrow. The bathhouse in our area had a washer and dryer that seemed to be going every time we passed by. The campground was noisy as there are a lot of airboats and small planes during the day. And directly behind the campground is a busy road, although we slept well. What did you think of the campsite? It was 
is the skinniest campsite I've ever seen. We just barely fit in there. We couldn't open up our awning. Yeah. The park was very nice. Um, we enjoyed the kayaking. And... There was a lot to do there. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back. And I think there was a lot more down in the area of the park that we could have done. But... Yeah. It's nice down there. It was very pretty. The weather was wonderful. We had a really nice time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to follow along with RVing with the Maracas Adventures. Thanks a lot.